Hey guys, a lot of people have been asking me lately to post a video about how I do what I do and how to scream. So I've decided to make my kind of own in, you know, impromptu video about how to do that. Um, I want to be clear first that my style is kind of weird and it's not exactly going to be right in the eyes of other people. Other people may tell you that I'm completely wrong and I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm doing. But if you want to learn from me and not from them, then here we go. This is breath control. Breath control is going to be what you do with your air and how much air you have so that you can work with those to make your screams when you form them. The first thing that I would recommend is a ton of cardio. It doesn't matter if you go run, you go scream, it doesn't matter if you go mosh with your friends in your room, it doesn't matter if you go out and work. That's fine. As long as you're doing something that improves your lung capacity, either through running or whatever, whatever may have you that you decide you're going to do. I would highly encourage that because in a stage like atmosphere you're going to need as much air as possible so that you don't get tired, you don't get burnt out. You're not going to be sitting there like, holy shit, I can't do this. You're going to be sitting there, you know, understanding, okay, this is how I use my breath, this is how I control it so that I'm not out of breath, I'm not running through lines and not being able to finish them, all of that good stuff. The first little warm up I would do to help you with that is listen to your favorite bands. Listen to the bands that you love and listen for their breaths. Listen for their pauses and listen for the where, where they do what they do. Because they're professionals and in the end of the day, either if you're covering them or writing a song in the same timing or writing a song in a different timing, it doesn't matter. You're going to need to look up to your peers, look up to those around you, and ultimately learn from them just as they learn from their peers and yada, 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 because they're going to know the best techniques. I would go with that and do that, but then on top of breathing, really be focused on exactly how much air you can hold in your lungs and for how long. That's kind of important when it comes to my screams and my highs, is I may have a huge pair of lungs and you know understand that I can take this huge giant breath, but if I'm not learning how to utilize it and how to like only release a certain amount of air when I'm forming those screams, it's going to make it very difficult for me to understand how to control that. I'll waste through my giant amount of breath and I won't be able to continue with the screen. So that really comes down to you know how you learn how to control your lungs and stuff, which we'll get into in a little bit. The point being for now is what I would do is I would focus on working out and screaming at the same time. Or moshing to your favorite bands and screaming along at the same time. It doesn't matter if you don't finish the lines right now, it doesn't matter if you can't scream, it doesn't matter if you don't think you can, it doesn't even matter if you're just yelling the words. Just make sure you're emitting a loud noise while you're moving because you'll realize very quickly, probably the first time you do it, you'll be like, damn, I'm running out of breath a hell of a lot faster. Damn, I'm getting dizzy, you know, all that stuff. And you'll start to learn exactly how breath works. Secondly, we're gonna move over to, you know, warming up before you learn how to form your screen. Before you learn how to form your screen, it's important to learn that warming up is going to save your vocals. I am bad at this because sometimes I don't myself but I like to encourage everyone that I teach, everyone that has taught me, has encouraged me, everyone everywhere has been encouraged you that you need to warm up. And the way to warm up is there's tons of ways to do it. The way I do it is a mindset. The way other people will do it is through your throat. You know, you can listen to Melissa Cross. Listen to it. Melissa Cross is amazing. I would highly go, go with her if you can. But if you can't find her videos, you know, try to look for a really, really good vocalist out there that has a tutorial, Austin Dickey, Jared Dines, they're all really great people, and they'll teach you a ton of that stuff. As far as me, my way to warm up is a confidence booster. You get yourself pumped up, you get yourself really angry, and the way that you do that is you just, you know, put yourself in the mood of what you're screaming. Never scream something, never do a cover that you don't really at least feel a little bit. Because the way that, because you, you'll notice it when you do it. The way that it works is it. Say I were to do a song I didn't feel. Yes, okay, sure, I could probably get through it. But in the end of the day, it's going to be emotionless because I didn't make it my own. And if it's emotionless, no one's really going to want to care. No one's really going to be like, oh, okay, that's yeah. They're going to be like, all right, yeah, good job, whatever, fuck you. The point is, you want to feel your emotion so that when you go up, you step up to the mic and you're ready to do it. You're powerful, and you know you're fucking powerful, and you're confident in what you can do, and you push through it. Persistence is excellence in this, so don't be thinking you're going to be, you know, I got this shit and then get there and then when you suck you'll be like, oh god, I'm going to suck forever. You need, this is really, I say again, persistence in excellence, which is really just sitting here, doing it every fucking day. It doesn't matter, do it two or three times a day. I know Jared Dines does it two or three times a day, he said that in his video. Austin Dickey pretty much does it every day from what I remember. I haven't seen him in a couple years. How you doing, buddy? Um, 
and myself, I warm up every day even if I'm not going to be on the mic. With that, we'll move on to forming the screen. Forming your screen is going to be the hardest part of learning. In the beginning of it, the best way I can explain it is going to be with a, a kind of a story, if that makes sense. And um, you follow me through the story, do it with me, and I'll show you exactly how I learned in the beginning to form my own. So, put yourself in a position regardless of where you're at, of where you have, you're living with your mother, okay? And your mother comes to you, and you're in the middle of a bunch of homework. And your mother tells you, we need you to take out the trash, and the trash can's a mile away, so you're gonna have to go get it. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna be think, oh fuck, and you're gonna go, ah, oh, right? That right there, that, ah. Oh. Do you hear the end of that, the ah, uh, right there? That is going to be how I strain my vocals to do my screams. Now, a lot of people tell me it comes from my throat, but it really doesn't. I've learned how to push it down through my diaphragm, but when I first learned, it was very throaty. So the best, what, what you're going to do is you're going to learn to practice to find the right, correct feel for you to where you know you are, in fact, screaming. And then your immediate thing after learning how to scream is going to be then pushing it out of your throat and down into your diaphragm the correct way. Which is, it's kind of hard, but you get it as you go. The fat, the more you go, the better off you'll be. So the point I'm making is that noise, that uh, right there, is going to be the best thing you can do. It's going to, you're going to hear, um, the best way I can explain it with me is, I, I, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, it's kind of gurgly, but at the same time, you feel, it feels like you're, you know, kind of like there's spit just coming out of your throat. And it kind of sounds gross, but that's going to be where you start, because you're going to go, uh, and bring it down. And the more you bring it down, you bring it down into a scream. And I know that, you know, that may be awkward for some people listening to hear me do weird noises and all that shit, but, you know, whatever. How are you going to learn if you don't try to match me? So together, we're going to do one, and um, it's going to sound like shit on this camera. I'm sorry ahead of time, but if you just do it with me, we can practice breath control and practicing how to match that scream. Just try to match me. So we're going to take a deep breath together, and then we're going to follow that by going, uh, and then bringing it down into a scream. You will feel it, and you will notice in my Adam's apple, you will feel it around your Adam's apple in males, and females, you'll just feel it in your throat, and it, you will feel it almost like a muscle, not tightening, but just moving down. And the farther you can get that down, the more healthy it'll be for you, which is really should be what you do. That's what I do when I practice my covers. I'm just practicing myself, trying to get my, my lows to not be throaty, not to be so airy. Trying to get my highs to be as sharp as I possibly can. And highs are completely different than lows are. But we're going to start you with lows first. So with me on three. One, two, three. Big breath in. And then... Uh, one more time. Three, two, one. Big breath in. And then... Uh, that is going to be your scream. I know it sounds awkward, but that's where you start. After that, you move forward to your lows. I will show you how then to control that. Okay, so you've learned how to form that scream at least somewhat. I'm sorry if I'm not very informative about it, but you've at least learned how to form that scream if you followed me and you kind of get what you're doing. If not, then you know continue looking up videos. I'm sorry I couldn't help you. This is the best way I can explain it. My style, again, is very weird, so I, I've never really had to explain it. This is my first time as well. So, you know, this is the best I can do. Um, but now that you've figured out, you've done the deep breaths, you've learned where your breaths are, you've then formed your scream, you've kind of found that gurgle, you've found that feel, you know exactly where that is. Now you can start to emulate that. When you emulate that, you, you want to push it towards a sound that you like. And you're always going to know what sound you like, whether that, that be cattle decapitation or asking Alexandria. So there's so, different, there's so many different types of screams is what I'm trying to say that you know the style you're going for. Now, with that being said, cattle decapitation sometimes has gutturals and stuff like that. So when those are just specialty type screams, as far as I'm concerned anyway, so those come from different areas and you learn them in different ways. So when it comes to that, you need to go to a different video for that. But if you're talking about just regular raspy screams and growls, then the best way you're going to do is you're going to take that scream. So remember where we had our, our original formation of that uh, that comes down into the low. What you're going to do is you're going to take that, and then now it is how you form your tongue and your mouth inside of your mouth to create that low into something more than it is. So if you remember, we would take a deep breath in, we'd go, and then we'd go, uh, like that. 
Notice my mouth already does its second nature by this point. But then try to make an O oh with your mouth and pull your tongue back in a little way that you can. So then you go. Aah. See the difference there? The difference there is that you've moved your tongue and created more of like kind of a tunnel filled feel. If that makes sense. But then from there, when you start to bring it down through your diaphragm, when you bring it down into your diaphragm is when you really get your tongue. And you can start to just play around with placing the placement of your tongue and the way that you move your lips just to make sure that you can find different things. For myself, I have some screams that I do myself that are, I kind of call them zombie vocals. They sound real nasty, kind of a crania type things. And um, I've done them on the new album as well. And I can show you little clips and shit if you'd like to right here. <laughs> But then from those, you can hear that those are really just a matter of me moving my mouth in a different way. So instead of me, you know, going like, I'm going with my tongue all weird. If you notice, that's a weird face. And that's going to be kind of the awkward part about being a screamer when you choose to be, is you're going to be doing a lot of weird faces and a lot of weird facial features when you do this shit. But that's going to be the only way you can form them. So. It's really a matter of, do you want to be a badass and look weird when you do them, or do you want to not do them? I chose to be a badass. <laughs> so, what you do from there is you form your screams, push them down, find placement in your mouth. But what I like to do is I like to curve my tongue back, like so, in my mouth, almost as if there's a little wave. So that it pops up near the back end of my throat, and then I make an O face, kind of, you know, a little bit of a low. And then the tighter you can get your mouth, the lower it can be as you strain those vocals. So you can go like that. So like the deeper you want to go is really more about how you strain yourself. And really the, in the end of the day when you start doing really massive lows, really massive highs, it's almost going to be second nature to tense your entire body. Like sometimes you'll see me, if you see recordings of me like in Nova or anything on our, on our YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, you'll see me in studio and my hands will shake. And the reason that is, is because I'm tensing so much that like you get to a point where you shake. And that's really how you know like, damn, I'm putting out a fucking crazy high is because your body will be so tensed because you're tensing your diaphragm, you're tensing your throat, you're tensing your arms, you're tensing your face, your lips, everything. That it just becomes like, it's just, that's why it sounds monstrous is because you're feeling monstrous. You're feeling that fucking angry, that tense, that fucking crazy. And from that is going to be like, that's really how you play around with like what you do with your mouth and how tensed up you are and like what you do. But from there, um, we learn low, we've learned lows. So if you do that, you can, we'll do, um, just for now, we'll do, I'll drop you down to those lows, I'll teach you how to do the mouth thing right now. And then from there, we'll move on to highs. After highs, I really don't have much to teach you because I'm still learning a lot myself. But right now, we'll do those lows right now. So grab your low, go, uh, find it in your throat and then bring it down into that O with that little, you know, the curvature of your tongue like I had just taught you. So go. And just match that. From there, you're going to kind of want to find your own style, and from finding your own style, it's going to be, you know, just emulating your favorite vocalist. For my instance, I loved older Suicide Silence back in the day. I still do. I think Mitch... As much as people say he's not very good, I think his highs are the crispest, craziest fucking sounding things in the world. At the end of the day, when I scream, I'm not as focused myself on, you know, maybe how, how brutal I am looking, or how mad I am, or how buff I am, or whatever the fuck it is. I just want to sound fucking insane. Like, I just want to sound like I'm going to fucking eat you and your kids. Like, that's all I care about. And Mitch's highs were the ways to do that. So through that, I emulated him, and from that, you've seen, you know, a lot of my highs have become very shrill, very fucked up, very, like, you know, false chordy sounding nasty shit. But from that, that's really dependent on you. Some people like to do fry screams. I personally hate them. I think they're weak. I don't know, that's just me. But um, some people do fry screams. Some people do gutturals only. Some people, you know, like, Black Tongue does fucking insane ass lows, makes a huge dude. Oshino does huge lows. Some people do inhales. I've been known every once in a while to do inhales myself, but the way I like to think of them is I really would only use them as an absolute last resort and extremely rarely because they deteriorate your vocals so fucking quickly that you'll get, like, you'll just destroy your vocals in no time. 
So the way that I would use them is I maybe, you know, maybe add one little line in a song like, you know, the breakdown in Berserk that I did on this channel. Uh, when that drops down, that drops down really crazy into some, you know, like, like all crazy. Um, but that's because I added an inhale in with the mixing of my lows. But the only re I would only do that one, and that was the only one I had done in the whole year. So if you can see what I'm talking about with rarity, is like I think if you want to add it, you can add it. I wouldn't do it by itself. I think it sounds shitty. The only person who I've ever thought kind of rocked it was um, Alex Kohler and Chelsea Grin's first album, the Kruku Banger um, album. But that's about it. Honestly, I wouldn't. I I've never really heard another pig squealer or or inhaler that I've ever been like, wow, you amaze me. I've always kind of been like, eh, it kind of sounds like shit. So I would only really use them to, you know, accent your screams, which is another thing we can talk about later. I don't know if you guys want to just, you know, put down in the comment section that you you want to hear about how, you know, how to combine screams for different tones, and I can teach you guys how to do that. That's how I do a lot of my layers, because it's not as simple as just a high or a low if you want, but it's, you know, it can be different. It could be a high and a mid or a high and a yell, and you can make it sound really crazy. But I can teach you guys that if you want to. But for now, we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna teach you how to do highs. And that's going to be the last thing that I teach you in this video, and that's going to be the best I can do. But with a high, you come from a point in your throat like you would with that, uh, you know, you feel, you know, that, that trash can thing I was telling you about, the uh, right there. But then what you do with that is try to invert it to the back of your throat. So instead of going uh, where you feel here, you're going to go back and you're going to feel it somewhere else. And I can't even explain where I feel it. It's kind of like nasally back of my throaty kind of weird but it's not coming from there, it's coming from down here, it's just forming there. So I'm getting like reverberations on my throat from there. But what you do with those is those are gonna be all about how you pronounce things. It's, everything's gonna have an A-Y on it. So like me is gonna be May. Um, C is gonna be like C, like out, kinda weird. But like, as weird as that is, they kinda work because then instead of, you know, you wouldn't go, you know, the creature in me, like you'd go me, like all crazy, because that's, you know, that's just the music industry, people do that all the time. It's just better vocal techniques, it sounds more fluent and sounds better to the ear. But from that, what you're going to do is you're going to take that high, you're going to go, you know, the uh, bring it reverted, bring it up to that weird space, I'm sorry, I can't find it for you guys, I apologize, I don't even know, it's, you know, around here. Find that space and go, it's about the same, it just feels a little more forward. But again, you're gonna pull these down into your diaphragm. You don't want to. You want to start here, but that's it. And then from there, you're gonna go. Eh, open your mouth as much as possible and let your tongue forward rather than arching it like you did. So you're gonna go. Eh, notice how that's kind of midi. The highs are gonna be where you strain your throat. You strain like not straining it, but I guess you stress it. If that makes sense, like you you know puff your throat out, puff your chest out, and then you're gonna strain your your um, your diaphragm from there. And then from there, you'll form kind of a really nasty gurgle that'll come from right about here. And that's going to sound kind of like you're going to go... And you're going to hear that right here. I don't know if you can tell, but that's where that real, that, that nasty da -da 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 kind of sound that you hear is really here, as much as it may sound like it's coming out of my mouth. It's just reverberating through my throat. And that's the weird part that I can't really explain to people is like where that feels and like where, you, where it comes from. Because I feel it here in my diaphragm, but at the same time, I also kind of feel it in the back of my throat a little bit weirdly, but that's just, I guess that's just the reverberations of how loud and how much I'm being loud. So with that being said, we're going to drag it from that revert, we're going to go into the revert, and then we're going to go from the revert to the high. And we're going to do that twice. So here's the first thing. Deep breath. One more time. Deep breath. See how that works? And that's how you're going to do that. So, you know, I'll run through a line for you. I see the tree. So you go, I see the tree! That's how you're going to form that high. You're going to do, you know, um, blez all come from high. So that's going to be an ooh feel. So you're going to go, yeah, like right there. But you're going to do that in the back of your throat rather than with your lips. Like when you do lows, lows when you do the weird blez that everybody does, you're going to go, ooh, and that's going to be all lips. So it's really going to be a matter of lips or tongue depending on what you do.
But that's, and that sounds like a really dirty joke, but hey ladies. Um, but yeah, that's really what it comes down to. The lows are gonna be kind of more lips, more placement of tongue, kind of blah, blah, blah. And then highs are gonna be more tongue, back of the throat, more diaphragmy, wide mouth, kind of real loud things. But that's pretty much how I do what I do. I'm glad for you guys taking the time. I, I'm super thankful anybody who sat, sat through this whole entire fucking thing. Jesus Christ, you pro what are you doing? You need to go outside, go have fun, go have a smoke, go run, go do what I told you to do in the first part of the video. But nonetheless, thank you, and I hope I helped you. Honestly, I know I'm not the best at explaining things. Um, I only hope that I at least maybe pointed you guys in the right direction. Like I said, if not me, if I sound like an idiot, or someone tells you that I'm wrong, and that my, I'm gonna destroy my vocals one day with the way I'm doing things, then that's fine, that's cool, fuck them, in my opinion. But if that's your, you know, your own preference, um, two other people that'll tell you completely different things are gonna be Austin Dickey and Jared Dines. They're great, love their vocals, love their techniques, love their bands, and um, that'll be a, at least a good start. If not, um, you are always welcome to find me on Facebook, message me, let me know. You'll be like, who did you learn from, or who did you, do you have any videos that you watch? And I can direct you in the, you know, the direction of a few other people. But I would start with them first because they're some of the, you know, coolest vocalists I know and I know them personally, and I'd really like them to, you know, get big out there and get all the views that they need, and they teach some really cool stuff. For instance, if you're interested in really crazy fucking vocals, um, I think Austin Dickey has a video on his channel called Bear Vocals or something like that. I forget. I haven't seen it, but um, he, I was, I was actually at um, Brotherhood back in the day, which is something that Jared Dine puts on. And Austin took me aside and showed me some things that he was learning. And he said, I don't know what they are, but these are some of the things that I learned. And he showed me. And um, I heard them and I thought they were the fucking craziest sounding things in the world. So maybe check that out if you want to learn something crazy. But I would start by learning first. It's going to take a while. Um, I've been doing it for about seven years myself. And I wouldn't say that I'm professional, you know. So it's, it takes a lot of time. But then there are a lot of people out there that will tell you. Um, I have a friend of mine, Joseph Wofford. Um, I'm sorry if I said your last name right, right buddy. But um, anyway. He actually, he, I don't think he's been screaming very long and his lows are fucking badass. So it, you can get certain things faster than others. My highs were almost like natural for me. They just became the thing that I'm doing. And my, like my lows were the things that I've really had to work on and progress through and I'm still working on myself. But um, for others, um, I don't know if anyone knows the, the, their, their since renamed, but the old band Prometheus had a vocalist named Caleb Dawson who for him, it was more of lows that were his naturality, and his and the naturalness on those they were amazing. They were great, and I loved them to death. They were fucking awesome. And uh, but his highs were what he had to work on. So it really really depends on like you know something will become more natural for you, and I would highly suggest pursuing that first, and then learning the others because then it gives you something to do. You don't want to you know try to master vocals or at least master this style, and then just be like, what do I do now? master one of it and then take your time through the other part of it and then you know by that point you may learn another thing you may learn a different style and it'll be fucking amazing and you'll be like okay let's go with that and then you'll just be a wide range of a vocalist and you'll have a, you know a, a ton of different things to do but again I hope I helped you I'm sorry for rambling I tend to do that um, I really hope to see you guys again in my next covers and I'm really stoked to do them for you. I got an Exotype coming out, an Exotype 1 coming out pretty soon here that I'm pretty sure the band said that they would share for me. So that's pretty exciting for me. So I will really be needing the shares on those. And um, as always, thank you. Honestly, thank you for taking the time. I consider anyone who sits and watches my videos until the very end, I, I consider you all friends. I don't consider anyone fans. I consider you all like personal friends of mine that took the time out to check out what I love to do. And I'll always be thankful for that. You can always find me on Facebook. It's uh, Clint Gullick. Just look me up. And um, I will always return messages as fast as I possibly can. And I'll, I'll be there for any one of you if you need me. Um, just remember that um, this takes time. And you'll get it. I have, faith in, I have faith in you. Feel free. Go ahead and tag me in some messages and say, Hey, am I doing this right? Or do I have a problem with this? Or blah, 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 blah. And I'll more than willing listen to it and give you pointers on where you should go from there in my opinion and all that shit. But again, thank you very much and have a good day.